So you own a drone now and you want to take your footage from here to there. Well, you're in the right place. I'm going to talk about five things today to make your footage look cinematic. Five things I'm going to talk about today are in a very specific order. I'm going to start out with some no-brainer things that as a filmmaker you need to follow these things. But as I progress up, I'm going to talk about a few things that perhaps people don't talk about enough. So stick around to the end of this video because number five is the most important. All right, number one, pinch the sticks, don't thumb the sticks. When you go to an arcade or when you play a video game at home with a joystick, do you use your thumb on top of the joystick? No, you need the most tactile force on those joysticks and the most amount of control. That's gonna come from actually pinching the joysticks with your finger and your thumb on each joystick. Then you get the maximum control that you require to control your drone. Sometimes you're actually controlling both joysticks and then as well the camera button dial on the side. So that's three points of contact that you need to be controlling. So give yourself the best opportunity for success. Let's face it, drone shots are very specific movements at very specific times. So you're going to get the most control when you do this technique. Number two. Slow and steady wins the race. We've all seen those drone pilots that fly their drones through moving trains and going through bridges and that's beautiful, but 95, 99% of the shots that you get as a drone pilot are going to be slow, methodical, systematic shots. You're not gonna be doing this crazy stuff. So what do you do to aid you in getting those shots? Well, you need to be going and taking advantage of the modes that DJI offers to you. For example, if you're flying your Mini, get into Cine mode. And that automatically takes power away from your joysticks so that you can get those smooth motions. If I fly my Phantom, I'm going into my active control modes and I'm going to tripod mode, which does the exact same thing. It slows everything down. It just makes it easier for me to get those smooth movements. Also, even when I'm in these modes, I'm not even going all the way on the joysticks. So it's important to understand that slow and steady wins the race when flying a drone. Item number three, the 180 degree rule. This is non-negotiable. So what that means is you are taking your frame rate, let's say 24 frames per second, you are doubling your shutter speed to that frame rate. So one over 48 or one over 50, close enough. If you're shooting 60 frames per second, you double your shutter, again, 120. By doing this, you're getting the required motion blur that makes the footage cinematic. We've been trained as movie viewers to expect motion blur when there's movement. And with drones, the shots usually are dynamic. They are moving. So we need to have the proper motion blur. If you've seen shots where the shutter speed is off the charts, you see that the image just doesn't look quite right and it doesn't look cinematic. Generally what I'll do is I'll put the proper ND filter on and before I even launch the drone, I'll hold it up in the sky and I'll point it to the brightness and just see where my histogram is showing. If the histogram isn't in the middle, I have to see if I can adjust my ISO. Remember with DJI products, try to keep that ISO down, all products in fact, even with my Sony mirrorless camera, try to keep the ISO down because there's less of a chance that you're introducing grain into your video. Here's an example of the 180 degree rule not being followed. So I have no ND filter on my Phantom right now. So what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the shutter speed to try to get me properly exposed. So right now I'm at one over 160. No, the histogram, I'm still to the right. So I'm gonna go to 200 now. Still, I'm touching the right side of the histogram. So I'm going to go head back into my shutter and go to 40. Nope, I'm still not happy. 320, I'm still playing with that right region of the histogram. 1 over 400 gets me in the range. So I'm going to try to do a side by side now. Taking this footage on the right, notice how sharp it is, how much it looks like video. 
take a look at the left where I'm following the 180 degree rule. Look at the motion blur as I go through the baseball backstop. Look at that car that's driving down the road and the motion blur that's being created. Go back to the right now. See as I turn the drone how everything is sharp. There's no motion blur at all. And that's what makes it look like video and amateur hour. Go back to the left. Look at those cars on the road. That's motion blur. As I slowly turn the drone to the left, I'm getting the proper cinematic look. This is the look that we have been trained as movie viewers to look for. We need the cinematic motion blur. The reciprocity triangle is a good diagram to try to understand what I mean by the 180 degree rule. Okay, here we go. Here's the exposure triangle or the reciprocity triangle. So we've got three main portions of this triangle. We have the shutter speed on the left, we have the aperture on the right, and we have the ISO on the bottom. So we have our frame rate set. We might be shooting 24 frames, in which case we are doubling that shutter speed. We may be shooting 60 frames per second. Same thing, we're gonna double the shutter speed and shoot one over 120. So the shutter speed is set. We do not need to worry about that. For aperture, jumping over to that side, you know, some drones have a variable aperture. If you go to f2.8, for example, then you're going to have a shallow depth of field. If you go all the way up to f16, you're going to have an extreme or, or a deep depth of field. But what I want to concentrate on here is the bottom, the ISO. So we want to keep that ISO down. We do not want to introduce noise to our footage. So we want to stay in around the 1, 2 to 400 range. If we go higher than that, we need to look at bringing the drone down and adding a more powerful ND filter. Then we can keep that ISO down around the 1 to 200 range. Always remember, look at your histogram and if it's over to the right, that means that you are overexposed. And if it's over to the left, you are underexposed. So maybe you have to pump the ISO. You need to be shifting on the fly. Always, always, always have your histogram up so that you can be viewing it because you want to be getting your footage right out of camera, properly exposed. You don't want your footage to be overblown because it won't be retrievable in post. It'll look like crap. Number four unwanted movements. So we see this all the time. Someone who's just gotten their drone, they shoot a video and they put it on Facebook and we see that they take it up in the air and you see every single movement. But as a professional and as a person who wants to make their footage more cinematic, you can't have any of those movements. So for example, it's happened to us all. We get the drone up in the air, we start recording, we start doing our shot, and then all of a sudden, maybe a tree is to our right. So we readjust. Right then and there, you have to understand that shot, it's done, okay? So either we have to press stop, go back, reset, and adjust and try that shot again, or we have to understand that in post, we're probably gonna cut right before that movement. It's important not to draw our audience out of the story. And unwanted camera movements, are sin. Here's an example of an absolute failure on my part. The battery was beeping and I was in a rush. All I wanted to do was do a quick flyover of these pots, slightly yawing to the right as I did it. Notice all the little tiny movements I'm doing. Nothing smooth. There's a movement. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. It's not until right around here where I'm actually smooth, but I had already missed the subject. This shot is an absolute failure. Sometimes you can actually cheat when you mess up. For example, here, I added a crossfade, but you don't want to get into a habit like that. Here, the story dictated that I could do it, and I got lucky. Don't get into that habit. Number five, and thank you for sticking around to the end. Now, don't think that this answer is cliched, but number five is, What's your story? Now, what do you mean, what's my story? Everything that we record has an end goal. We're going to be delivering a product to a client. You need to know what your customer's end goal is. What's the story? 
if it's a realtor, what are they looking for? Well, they're looking to show how beautiful the property is. Maybe the property isn't beautiful. Maybe they're gonna have a different story. Maybe the story is, wow, it's a great location, uh, close to a lot of nightlife. Well, then that story is going to be a completely different video from the first one. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? For example, you could go to a film site and you could meet a director. Now the director could be on his or her game and have storyboards and they'll tell you exactly what they want every single shot and that's a dream. Then you just need to get your drone up in the air and deliver what they want. But there's other times you'll go to a film set and the director has no idea what they want. They just say, oh, just give me a cool shot. That's when you, as a professional, step up and say, what feeling are you trying to emote? What feeling do you want to give your audience? Once you know that as a drone pilot, you can say, yeah, okay, I can go up there. I can creep in on this subject. I can do a slight turn and surprise the audience. There, I mean, you're the professional. You have to understand story. And if that director doesn't understand the story, which is gonna be a sad thing when the movie's done, you do. So you deliver a product that they're going to be happy with because you're a professional and your footage is cinematic. And you understand that you need to deliver a story to the audience. Well, there you have it. Those are the five things that you can do immediately to take your footage from being mediocre all the way to being professional, to be looking cinematic, to beautiful. So, if you like this video, please subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment on future videos that you'd like to see from me. Thanks a lot, and have a good day.